Today you are joining me on board a very special vessel for what will be the first ever yacht tour video on YouTube of this brand new Alm Delfino Grand Voyager. Launched in 2024, this beautifully crafted trawler style explorer yacht is, as of this recording, currently listed for sale. But we'll delve into those details at the end of the video. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a drink and come along as I show you around this Dutch built Explorer Yacht. Before I show you around, please don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really want to see if we can get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So this is the Grand Voyager and she is very grand and she's extremely capable when it comes to voyages as well. This boat is a serious passage maker. I can't wait to take you on board and show you around. She's had so much interest when I've shared pictures of her on my Instagram. So it's a real joy to be on board. She's got an LOA of 19.95 meters. Uh, she's got a beam of 5.65 meters and a draft of 1.65 meters. Coming to the stern here, we've got a large swim platform. As you can see, we've got a swim ladder over there on the port side. You'll also notice this boat does have a stern anchor as well, and she has spud poles both on the bow and on the stern. If you follow me on Instagram, then you would have seen this video that I shared showing a spud pole being deployed. These spud poles are vertical anchoring devices that extend down from the hull to the riverbed, providing a stable and secure hold. They are particularly useful in inland waterways, allowing the yacht to anchor without traditional anchors. This makes mooring in shallow water much easier. Let's jump on board. I'm gonna board the boat via the port access gate over here. So we take a few steps up and then onto the nice wide side deck. Turning aft, great cockpit area here. Lots of seating there on the transom. And obviously we've got a table here as well, so you can sit down enjoy some alfresco dining with your friends and family. Now the boat does have a flybridge. We'll be heading up there later on in the video. In terms of the engine room, we can get access down into the engine room through that hatch, but we also can get access into the engine room via the swim platform as well. Let's head down here using the starboard stairs and look, we can get a really good appreciation of the size of this swim platform. It really is big. There's the door that leads into the engine room. And over here, we've got the Stillhead Marine crane with a weight lifting limit of 450 kilograms. So you can get a decent sized tender on here as well. Go back into the cockpit by the same stairs on the starboard side. In fact, let me just back up a little bit because here we have a shower as well. So when you've finished frolicking around in the water, come onto the swim platform via the swim ladder over there and you can have a shower just on the transom. A very nice touch. On the starboard aft quarter, we find some stainless steel bollards and a Maxwell hydraulic capstan, which make bringing the boat alongside much easier, especially if you are operating this boat as a couple. Atop the bulwarks, we find stainless steel sea railings. These are incredibly durable and resistant to corrosion, ensuring long lasting safety and a polished appearance in harsh marine environments. And of course, we have another heavy duty side railing gate over here on the starboard side of the vessel as well. But yeah, I like the fact you've got a bit of an overhang here. The boat hook up there nearly stowed away. Let's continue forward. I'll just give you a sneak peek of the wheelhouse as well. Look at that. We'll check that out in a second. Let's continue forward. We step up onto the bow. And here you can see, obviously at the moment, the cushions aren't here, but you've got a seating area just in front of the wheelhouse there. And you can put some sun pads over there as well. So this is a really great area for coming up, relaxing, chilling out with your friends, having a drink for sundowners with all the space that you've got up here. But let's check out those straight up and down windows on that wheelhouse. Personally, I love forward raking windows, but I think these have got a really nice aesthetic appeal 
as well. Big sturdy windows there. Spin around, let's continue forward and show you the windlass. So obviously we've already seen the stern anchor. Up here, we've got a 100 kilogram anchor. It's got 80 meters of 13 millimeter chain. And there we see the windlass, the Maxwell hydraulic windlass there as well. Over here, we've got a hatch that leads down into the forward cabin and we'll go and check that out in a second. But first, let's stand here and just appreciate the lines of this beautiful, beautiful boat. Designers have done such a fantastic job. I really, really love the look and the feel of this boat. And when you're stood on here as well, she feels extremely sturdy. Uh, we took her out on a mini sea trial earlier on. You probably will see that footage either now or earlier in the video. But when we were motoring around out there, she just feels really sturdy. Look, we've got some storage under there for our lines, nice and handy. Let's close that up. The multi-hard chine steel hull on this boat is between eight to five millimeters thick. And as you would expect with a serious passage maker, she has a CE category A certification as well. Also, she has a displacement of 65 tons. One of the things I love about this cockpit as well is you've got seamless access into the saloon. You've got two doors here, which obviously open up and effortlessly connect the saloon to the cockpit. All right, let's head in. Over on the port side, we've got an L-shaped seating area, plenty of space for all your friends and family to relax and unwind after a hard day on the water. Down here, something I noticed earlier on, we've even got the connector for your hoover. So yeah, plug that in, hoover away. It saves you having to lug a hoover around with you, which no one really wants to do. Over here on the port side, some cold storage, nice and handy. The galley on this boat is actually below deck and we'll obviously head down there in a second. There's my drone charging from our little flight earlier on during the sea trial. But yeah, let's just take a step back so you can take this area in. So opposite the L-shaped seating area, you have lots of cabinetry over here. You've got a big TV that's recessed into the cabinetry. So if I take you a few steps backwards and we sit down here, you can get an idea of how you'll be able to unwind and relax after a day on the water watching your favorite YouTuber or one of them. The other thing I like as well is the indirect lighting. I've always been a really big fan of indirect lighting because I think it's so understated in terms of how it actually creates such a nice relaxing ambient atmosphere. And they've done a really, really good job with the ambient lighting on this boat as well. So let's head forward. Over here we've got the control, for the climate control that actually is for the Wabasto heater. And over here on the starboard side, we've got the digital controls for the air conditioning. So down there is where we find the galley and another dining area. I'll take you down there in a second. First, let's check out this helm station. As you would expect with a brand new boat, we've got all the latest technology and equipment on here. As well as the two large Raymarine multifunction displays, there are three 170 multifunction displays as well. The throttle control levers are on the right side of the helm position with the controls for the bow and stern thruster over on the left side. There are two Raymarine 73 VHF radios, a Raymarine depth sounder and a Raymarine autopilot. She's also fitted with a Raymarine Cyclone 55 watt radar which depending on propagation conditions has a range of around 72 nautical miles, which is very impressive for a small navigation radar. This boat also does come with an RMK10 remote controller as well. If we look up on the brow, we've got your VHF over there on the left hand side, and there's a diagram there for all your nav lights when you're underway. But yeah, what do you think of this helm station? I absolutely love it. Uh, we've got some more VHF radios over here on the right hand side. And look, check this out, a Recaro seat for the captain or owner operator, because you can owner operate this boat as well. Uh, over there on the left-hand side, we've got an access door out onto the port side deck. Of course, got another one over here on the starboard side. So if you are operating this boat as an owner operator, um, you can quickly get access out onto the upper deck. While we're here, actually, let's just pan around so I can show you this saloon 
Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Standing up here as well, because we are slightly raised when we come up into the uh, helm position area, uh, you get a really good vantage point. As you can see, clearly, lots of natural light coming in here, thanks to these huge windows you've got, both on the port side and over there on the starboard side as well. Right, let's spin around, let's head down below. This boat has three cabins with a total of seven berths. The interior boasts an elegant finish in oak with American walnut details. So down here on the port side, we've got another L-shaped seating area, another place to come down, relax, have some food, have a drink with your friends, enjoy the view, especially if your friends are gonna be cooking you up a meal on this galley. Over here on the starboard side, got the cold storage. This is the fridge, there we go. And then underneath that, we've got the freezer. I'm sure you all know what a freezer looks like, so I won't bother opening that. In here, we have a big, decent sized Miele dishwasher, stainless steel sink, and you get a view as well as you're cooking your food, thanks to those large portholes. Lots of space here on the countertop, so you can get all your food prep ready, all the stuff you need to cook up your fantastic meal that all your guests are gonna be really looking forward to eating. Over here, we have a Miele oven, and on the top there, we've got an induction hob. Again, Miele induction hob and a Miele extractor fan as well. Over here we have a Furuno speaker, so I'm guessing that when the VHF radio is on, you can have that repeater down here so you can listen to what's going on uh, if you wanna be listening out on channel 16 or whatever whilst you're down here. Again, we've got some more controls. This is the control for the uh, Whisper generator. And obviously you can plug in some of the other items in there as well. Another thing to point out is when you're sat over here on this L-shaped seating area, we do have another TV that is recessed into that cabinetry as well. So you can come down here uh, and watch some telly if that's what you want to do as well. Over here on this bulkhead, another control for the air conditioning. Back aft is where we find the guest accommodation. I'm going to take you first into the owner's cabin. Walk up two steps. And in we come, look at this, what a beautiful area. Nice, decent sized porthole over there on the starboard side. And of course, another one over there on the port side as well. But when you're in bed, relaxing, look, you've got that skylight as well. So you can get a view of the uh, starlit sky just as you're nodding off. And what better way to fall asleep than taking in the visual spectacle of a clear starlit sky at night. Over here on the port side, we've got the toilet. I actually like the fact that the toilet and the shower are separate on here, uh, just a personal preference. Heated tower over there on that bulkhead. Another porthole that we can open up to get some additional ventilation in here if we want to. And obviously we've got the sink there with some more cabinetry underneath. And there we go, let you stow all your toiletries away. If it was me on this boat, if I owned it, I'd probably just have a bottle of head and shoulders in here, some shower gel, uh, and that'd be it. But yeah, that's what you get for living on warships for five years. You learn to travel light. Okay, over here on the starboard side, it's where we find the shower. Really decent sized shower, obviously rain head up there, another porthole, handheld shower as well. And that you've even got a space where you can put your toiletries and some more cabinetry underneath so you can stow your other toiletries in there. Here we have the mirror, standard salute. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Uh, another heated towel row over there. And that will be shut off. So when you're having a shower in peace. Behind there, we see another Furuno speaker. Siemens air conditioning control. Uh, let's pop this open. I've not looked in there yet. Yeah, there we go, some more space to stow away your stuff. The other thing I like as well is that when you're in bed, you can plug in your charger. If you want to charge your laptop or your iPad, we've got a reading light over there on that bulkhead as well. But yeah, I really, really love the finish. The quality of the finish in here is just spectacular. They've done such a, an amazing job throughout this boat. And again, look, you've got that indirect lighting giving a nice hue to the overhead up there. Right, let's spin around back through this door, back through into the galley. 
and straight across here down into the guest accommodation area. Right, let's start over here on the port side. Twin single cabin. So great space for teenagers if you're gonna be bringing some kids on board or younger people or two adults, whoever you wanna take with you. Obviously up to you, it's your boat, or hopefully it will be your boat. Lots of natural light coming in here thanks to these three vertical portholes. And of course, look, you can open these up as well to get some additional ventilation in this space. There's the control there for the heating. And over here, got the controls for the air conditioning as well. So you can set the temperature according to your own preferences, uh, which again, I think is a really nice touch. Personally, I always like it absolutely freezing. So that's probably what I would be setting the temperature to in here. I like sleeping really cold. I did mention obviously twin single, but you've probably noticed you've got the runners there on the floor. So you can turn that into a double bed if you want to. Right, let's spin around, show you the ensuite. Over here, we've got the shower, little rain head up there, another heated towel rail on that bulkhead. Obviously, the toilet, the sink, and another porthole over there. Let's open up one of these just so you can get an idea of the depth of the cabinetry on there. Let's shut that and we'll spin around. Uh, which door should we go through? Let's go through this one here. Open this up and we enter the third cabin. I really like this layout in here. Clearly, as you can see, we've got a double bed. We've also got a single berth up there as well. So again, a great cabin if you're gonna be bringing a young one on board with you. Again, over here on the starboard side, we've got the vertical portholes and these can each be opened up for some additional ventilation. And we've got a blind as well. Obviously the blind's up at the moment, but you can lower the blind. So if you wanna get some sleep during the day, if you've had a heavy night, then you can do that. You can black out this area. Again, got the controls for the heating on that bulkhead and the controls over here for the air conditioning. Let's shut that door and then we'll open this one. And here we have the toilet, which can also be used as a day head as well, because you've probably noticed there's another door there. So yeah, another big mirror. I'll save you the salute. Another sink there. And some more cabinetry underneath. Right, let's shut that. Open this one. Before I leave, actually, let me just duck down here. And you can see, look, you've still got plenty of headroom. So if you happen to be on the left-hand side of this double bed, you've still got a nice amount of space between you and the single berth above you. But yeah, once again, look at that indirect lighting all the way around the overhead. A reading light over there as well. Right, let's spin around. we we'll shut this door and move back into the galley. Big old pole here as well to grab onto when you're moving around on the way. Let's just take in that galley one more time and spin around over to that L-shaped seating area. But yeah, what do you think of this boat so far? Please let me know in the comments. I always read the comments. Really interested to hear your feedback. Let's jump up here. Let's pop open one of these actually. So you can see what we've got in that one. Let's move over to the left hand side. And then look, there we go. All your Ray Marine electrical gear, fuses, easy to access right behind the helm position. Let's open up this one as well. There we go, look at all that. All neatly tucked away. Everything you need in terms of the electrical gear for the fuses is right behind you. Shut that. And we'll stand up, not too far so, so I don't want to faint. Oh look, of course, pointed out the displays. And over here on the right hand side, you've got a camera which was used um, by the very talented broker from the Vaucus who was coming in alongside. Uh, it's a really great to have a stern facing camera so you can see exactly what you're doing. Right, before I go down into the engine room, I'm gonna take you up onto the flybridge. So we come back out into the cockpit, walk over here, up these steps. And there we go, look, up onto the flybridge. Nice spacious flybridge up here. 
as you can see, the radar arch can be retracted, which is really handy when it comes to obviously lowering your air draft if you want to be cruising around in the inland waterways. With the radar mast in its upright position, the boat has an air draft of 7.75 meters, but when you lower it, the vessel's air draft reduces to 5.85 meters. But yeah, there's plenty of space up here so you can have some freestanding furniture configured however you want to really. Quite a unique perspective from the uh, radar arch here. So let's have a look at the big old spotlight there. Loud hailer. And there we go, look at that radar. Beautiful. Right, let's spin around. Take it up to the helm position. Pretty much what we'd find down in the main wheelhouse. Throttle control levers over there on the right hand side. Multifunction display and digital displays there for the Volvo Penta engines, bow and stern thruster, Raymarine VHF radio there as well, and your ship's wheel. And look at that, that's a comfy little seat. Let's sit here and see what the viewing angle's like. There we go, look at that, look at all these beautiful boats. I mean, what a place to be. I could literally spend all night here just walking around looking at these boats. But yeah, I probably won't be doing that tonight. That's not a nice boat as well. I do like the look at that one. Anyway, let's spin around. So yeah, that's the flybridge. Let's say lots of space up here. Lay out how you want in terms of your modular furniture, but a great place to sit and enjoy the view whilst you're underway. Right, let's spin around. Go back down the stairs into the cockpit. Obviously when you're at sea and it's a bit rough, you can close this off. Let's go down the steps. And here is where we are going to get access into the engine room. There we go. So here we are in the engine room. Really decent sized engine room here. Lots of headroom. Really well laid out. This boat is powered by twin Volvo Penta D6 300 horsepower engines. About 220 kilowatt output giving this boat a maximum speed of around 11 knots with a cruising speed of nine knots. At a cruising speed of nine knots, she consumes about 15 liters an hour, which is really, really good. Engine cooling wise, the engines are cooled using a freshwater heat exchanger. Over here on the port side, we've got the Webasto system here for the air conditioning. And of course, we've got the Cabola heater there as well. The bow thruster on this boat is a hydraulic side power unit while the stern thruster is electric. She features a water-cooled exhaust system complete with a silencer and for power she's equipped with a 14.5 kilowatt whisper generator with a wet exhaust. As for stabilisation she has fin hydraulic side power stabilisers to ensure a smooth ride. The air conditioning unit has a zero starting peak and when the Kubota system is being used it's extremely quiet. Is the hydraulic control manifold crucial for the thrusters, capstans and winches? If you're interested in finding out more about the technical prowess of this boat then be sure to check out the link that I'll leave pinned in the comments and the link I'll leave in the video description. I'll take you into the lazarette. Oh, it's very warm in there so it's nice to be back out here into a cooler space. There's a door that we saw that leads out onto the swim platform. Got a Miele washer dryer over there on the starboard side. And let me show you behind there. Little porthole over there on the starboard side. On this bulkhead we have the Whisper Power inverters. And if I spin around and show you the other side of the lazarette, you'll notice that you can turn this area into crew accommodation if you want to have a member of crew on board. Let's finish this boat tour by showing you once again the engine room and stay tuned because if you want to find out more about what you need to do if you want to buy this boat I'll give you the details in just a second. Thanks for joining me on this yacht tour. I'm really interested to hear and read what you think of this beautiful boat. I absolutely love her. At the time of making and uploading this video to my YouTube channel, she is currently listed for sale. If you want to find out more, I'll leave a link in the video description and I'll leave a link to my micro site pinned in the comments as well. 
Remember, if you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my channel, feel free to get in contact with me. Another thing as well, if you're looking to charter a boat, doesn't matter where in the world or whatever budget, sail, motor, whatever, please get in contact with me. I've teamed up with TJB Super Yachts to be able to offer you some charter experiences that you'll never forget. So if you wanna find out more about that, as well as my other services, then make sure you check out my microsite and don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter as well. If you're interested in Explore Yachts, I'll be putting out updates in my newsletter as and when I hear anything new about Explore Yachts and what is going on in the wonderful world of Explore Yachts. So that's enough from me. Once again, a massive thank you to Devault for inviting me on. I've really enjoyed this tour and I've really enjoyed showing you around. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. When you subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss the video that I'm gonna make about this Bloomsma Explorer Yacht. And in the next few weeks, I'll be dropping my boat tour video that I made about this boat, the Full Star. Plus, soon I'll be heading to the south of France to make a video about this converted deep sea North Atlantic scallop trawler. And soon I'll be heading back to the Netherlands to make a video about this Pilot's House Trawler 60. And I'll also be featuring this converted fishing trawler. So make sure you come and find me on Instagram so you can stay up to date with what I'm doing and where I'm going. You'll find a link in the video description as well as a link pinned in the comments. Thank you.